We have film, we have holders. I'm gonna teach you how to load these. The good news for us large format photographers is you can still get film. Ilford, Kodak, still making film for all these holders. Today's video is gonna be about working with the film, working with the holders, and my process. To show you some context about 4x5 film, here's a 35 millimeter frame, here's a 6x7 frame, and this is a 4x5 frame. That's four inches by five inches. Part of the reason people like to shoot larger format is for the finer grain, it's for the wider tonal range. It gives you know, this beautiful organic look. I love it because it gives me something different. I can throw the background out of focus quite easily when I shoot portraits. I love the large format. It just gives it such a different look than anything else is making. That's why I still shoot 4x5 film. Whether you're gonna load 4x5, 5x7, 8x10, you're gonna load these film holders exactly the same way. And exactly the same way if it's black and white film, C41 film, E6 film. It's all the same. Now one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to do is get all the tabs right on your holders. There's a white tab and there's a black tab. The white tab for me, and this is the way I do it, means that there's an unexposed sheet of film. A black tab means when you're out taking photos, if you have a white tab like that, you take your picture, you pull it out, you put it back in, and it's the black tab. When you come back into the lab, you know that the black tab is an exposed sheet of film. You wanna get all your film holders consistent. So I put all mine out to the white tab. The next thing I do is housekeeping. I live in a place that has a huge amount of static electricity, a huge amount of dust, and I'm always battling with that. One of the things that I do after every, probably every second time that I go out, is I actually vacuum my holders. I also keep a little rocket duster to see if there's any remaining dust here and a camel's hair brush. I use the brush all the time just to make sure that nothing's left, that my holders are spotless. I then get my holders ready to load. I keep the tab out like this on both sides. I don't take it all the way out because you're gonna do this when it's pitch dark. You don't wanna be fumbling around looking for a tab and if a tab falls, it could fall like that and then you're gonna load your film and it's gonna be the wrong way and you're gonna have to start all over again, turning out the lights and putting the tab in. So I keep my tabs out like that on each one and then I get my stack of holders ready to load. Your film, you're gonna to wanna to open it up. I usually suggest to people that they get five holders. And part of the reason is you get 10 sheets of film in a box and five holders is gonna hold a box of film. So you're gonna have your box of film, you're gonna open it up, now stop. You have to do this in pitch darkness. It has to be dark. You can't do it during the light, you're gonna ruin the film. So it has to be a complete dark. This is my dark room. I can make it go completely dark. You need a dark room or a change tent to do this. You're gonna find in this box, either a plastic wrapper like this or a cardboard one that you're gonna rip open. And when you pull this out, you're gonna find your film is in here, like that. So in the dark, you wanna feel around for the notches. When you feel the notches, you wanna turn it around so that the notches are in the bottom right of the film, like that. You've probably noticed on 4x film they have notches. Notches are the code that's used to tell you what type of film you're shooting. Every single format has its own particular notch. When you're in the darkroom or you send it to the lab, it lets people know what type of film that you've shot, so you know how to develop it. If it's C41, if it's black and white, if it's E6, notches are super important. If this is gonna be your first time doing this, you actually take a sheet of film and you wreck it. You take it out, you practice, you do it once, like this, you put it in, you take it out, and spend a bit of time practicing this. It will save you time and money down the road. And then start doing it with your eyes closed until you can do it perfectly, and then you're ready to go into the darkroom. Now, whether I'm set up in the darkroom or in a change tent, 
I do things exactly the same every single time. When you do things exactly the same every single time, you're not gonna make any mistakes. So we get our holder out, and we get our piece of film. We pull this tab back, we take this piece of film with the notches in the lower right, and they go under, you can see here, there's a bottom little tab, the film goes underneath that, you need to practice that. This comes down, this goes in. You turn it around, you grab your next sheet of film, notches, goes all the way in, tab goes down, this goes this way. Now after I'm done loading this sheet into this film holder, I put it vertically this way. That way in the dark, if a holder is vertical, I know that it's been loaded. After we have our film holders loaded, I always write down here what kind of film it is. So as I was saying before, I live in one of the driest places on earth here. And I work in the country all the time. There's all kinds of dust that I battle. So after we click the tabs in place so that the uh, tabs on these holders can't come up, I take my stack and I put them in a Ziploc bag that I seal. And then this package goes in my bag for me to work. Now the same goes for unloading and shipping your film off. When I come back into the dark room, I will take my film out. It'll get bagged. It'll get put into a box and I'll clearly mark it to ship it out to a lab. One of the other things that you'll notice on my holders is after I've come back from a shoot and I've taken my photographs, I have a piece of artist tape that I tape here and that just prevents the dark slide from coming out. I learned that from the great large format photographer George Tice and you just peel that off. The beautiful thing about this tape, it leaves no residue on your holder, so no sticky surface. This is a great trick that I learned and I use it all the time on all my holders. Now I have a couple of ways of carrying my holders in the field. This is a great little think tank bag. It is called the Mirrorless Mover 20. And I bought it for a little camera to carry around, but then what I discovered is it actually holds uh, four by five holders perfectly and in here I can also you know put my roll of artist tape So this is a great little bag that I use out in the field all the time Now this is the other way that I carry my holders. This is made by NAS gear and These are quite brilliant. I love these These will take eight holders and you just put them in like this and then these all just fold up this goes, and it's a great way of carrying gear. This can fit here on your tripod when you're working, but I only use these when it's not super dry and dusty. Um, I love carrying holders this way. And I have these both for eight by 10 and four by five. When I'm on the road, I take a change room with me as well. These are wonderful. Go in your luggage, they zip out. and they pop up like this. You have the hole in here, you put your film, you put your holders. Your arms go in here like this, then you can load your holders in a hotel room, in the back of a car, I've done it all kinds of places. So there's also a change tent, which I like as well, and this is a change room. This is the Rolls Royce of change rooms. It's made by Fujifilm. A friend of mine gave me this. He used to work in a lab when the lab shut down. And this, I take this on the road as well. But these are wonderful.
Now you have a big space to change film in. I do my eight by 10. I love taking this on the road. It really gives me a lot of space and a lot of room to maneuver everything and nothing gets lost. Love this change room, Fuji film, try to find one. So there you have it. Your holders are loaded, you're ready to go out and shoot. So don't forget to subscribe, hit a like, leave me a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. I really hope this helps you guys out. Cheers.